Son together for Jesus and um, please have your seat. My case is different. In this second service, let's call, let's do our call to worship from Psalms 113. I read verse 1, you read verse 2 responsively till we get to the end. Praise ye the Lord. Praise all ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 2. Let's From the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Verse 4. Yes. 
who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high. Verse 6. He raised up the poor out of the dust and lifted the needy out of the dog he. Verse 8. Let's take verse 9 together. He make the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. You are welcome to service. My case is different. Please pay attention to the following faith tabernacle announcements. Number one. Praise the Lord. Operation Run, our ongoing kingdom advancement agenda enters its third week today. Hallelujah. We are therefore admonished to engage both individually and in our soul winning partnerships in prayer and soul winning to the point of establishment. Therefore, our One Heart Kingdom Advancement evening prayer continues tomorrow, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday at all WSF district centers. Remember, we are in the enthronement phase of the Wonder Double Prophetic Agenda. Expect your engagement to result in your supernatural enthronement. Time, 6 to 7 p.m. Number two. Covenant Hour of Prayer continues tomorrow, Monday to Saturday. Take advantage of this platform as an avenue for your spiritual enhancement. Time, 5.30 to 6.30 a.m. Number three, Believers Foundation class holds this Monday for all new converts in several and ten locations, cut across Lagos and Ota. All our new converts and new members are admonished to take advantage of this very important platform for spiritual empowerment that will result in victorious living. Time, 6 to 7.30 p.m. Number four, midweek communion service holds this Wednesday both here in Canaan land and at all zonal fellowship centers in Lagos, Ota, and Environ. Remember, we shall be waiting on the Lord in a fast and break with the communion. Time, 6 p.m. Number five, we now satellite fellowship. Our house trust fellowship holds every Saturday. We are all expected to be part of this for our spiritual growth and development. Time, 5 to 6 p.m. And number six, praise the Lord. Next Sunday, the 4th of June, 2017, shall be our breaking generational causes service. Hallelujah. Come expecting definite encounters with God via his word. Service schedule is as usual. Jesus is Lord. Put those hands together for the Lord. My case is different. In this service, it is testimony time. Please listen as I take this written testimonies. Number one, the siege of untimely death destroyed in my family. I joined this commission in 2016. Before then, there was a plague of death in my family that killed my four siblings. When I joined this commission, the plague almost killed me too. On several occasions, I caught blood and I knew that I was next in line. So I cried and prayed daily to God to stop the plague. In one of the services, I heard Bishop David Oedeko talk about soul winning. So I keyed into it. While I was busy winning souls for Christ, God was busy taking care of my family. To the glory of God, June 2015 made it 10 years that we neither recorded death nor went to the hospital for treatment. Give God a big hand. Behold, the God of this commission has terminated the plague of death in my family. This is from Matis Oyeye Chuku. Number two, change of level via prophetic word. I am here to testify to the acts of God in my life. I have never lost longer than three to two months on any job before being fired. This made it rather difficult to cope with the payment of my house rent. So I settled for squatting 
with people. Despite that, things became worse. I went everywhere for solution, but things got worse instead. Then I had an encounter with Bishop Oedipo. He said that I could command my liberty. And the word hit me, and I did. Today, God has given me breakthroughs in my career. I'm living in a, a choice house, got a job since 2013, married, blessed, became a consultant in oil and gas industry. My name came out in news media headline, and, and now I have become a reference point to my friends. So God be all the glory. Give God a big hand. This is from Abiodu O. You are next on the line in Jesus' name. My case is different. In this service, as our custom is, we have come to return glory to God for all that he has done for us in this great month. It is time for end of month marriage, thanksgiving, and children dedication. The Bible makes it clear it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto his name. And that is what we have come to do this morning, to give God the glory and to celebrate him for all of his faithfulness manifested in our lives in various departments. As our custom means, the choir will be leading us in high praises, and every one of us, we are going to be celebrating and giving God the glory. And for those of us who are here for children dedication, for marriage, Thanksgiving, and all special Thanksgiving as well, dancing our way forward, and the rest of us, wherever we are, giving God the glory for all of his goodness towards us as the choir leads us. Choir, high praises, let's celebrate him. <laughs> We lift our hands to heaven and from the depth of our heart begin to offer our thanksgiving unto the Lord, appreciating Him for His goodness to each one of us in our lives as individuals, our families, 
begin to celebrate him and give him the glory give him the honor give him the adoration is worthy of all praise father we thank you we celebrate you we honor you we give you praise you are worthy of praise and glory and honor and adoration we celebrate you lord specifically mention that which you are thanking him for from the depth of your heart let him hear the specifics of your thanksgiving and your appreciation forget not his benefits father we thank you blessed be your holy name jesus you are worthy of all praise you are worthy of all glory accept our thanksgiving lord in the precious name of the lord jesus we have prayed our father in the name of jesus we thank you for your faithfulness in our midst as individuals as families as a church family we have come today to say we are grateful thank you for the testimonies the liftings the turnarounds the promotions lord thank you for the healings the deliverances thank you for breaking bondages we give you all the praise Lord, we thank you for the miracle marriages that are being celebrated here. Lord, for every such married Lord that you have brought today and consummated, we decree your hand upon them forever. They shall remain exemplary homes forever. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for these miracle children. You have granted each one of them to these families. For children are the heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is your reward. Therefore, we put these children back into your hand. And as they are anointed today, we decree the seal of your presence over each one of them. We decree that no evil shall come near their dwelling. They shall be kept under you forever. None of them shall go astray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As we celebrate over them today, we decree that they shall remain a joy to their generation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we use all of this as point of contact for those who desire the same and we decree multiply. In the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you, mighty God. Lord, for all that you have done, this morning we have come to say that we are thankful. Accept our thanksgiving in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lift up your thanksgiving seed unto the Lord right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, with gratitude in our heart, we have come not only with a song in our mouth, not only with a dance in our step, but with a seed in our hand. In honor of you, let it be accepted in your sight. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. For all of us that are in front, all those for, with children for dedication, ensure that they are anointed and before you return back to your seat. Every one of us, we are dropping our thanksgiving seed in honor of Jesus, celebrating him as the choir leads us in high praises again. Those in front are returning to our seat as we celebrate God. Hallelujah. Baba, I'm a baby. 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 I'm a ba
case is different. Give Jesus a big hand and please you may be seated in his presence. This morning it's my privilege to welcome a number of us who are here today worshiping at the Faith Tabernacle for the first time on Sunday like this. If today is your first time at the Faith Tabernacle on Sunday, please would you rise on your feet this morning. Rise on your feet this morning. Give Jesus a big, big hand. Everybody is worthy of all the praise and of all the glory. Please remain standing. Our officials will put into your hand a special welcome package. They will also give you a slip to fill. As soon as you receive both the package and the slip, please take your seat and begin to fill that form in the course of this welcome. As soon as you receive both the package and the slip, please be seated and begin to fill the form that is given unto you in the course of this welcome. I'd like to welcome each one of us today on behalf of Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church, and on behalf of his servant, the apostle over this commission, Bishop David Oyedepo. I want you to know that you have come today to a mountain of God and to a city of refuge. And that means that every siege against your life and against your destiny has come to an end today in the name of the Lord Jesus. The Bible makes it very clear to us. It says that I will appoint a place for my people. They will not move anymore. And the sons of wickedness shall not afflict them as before time. I know that God has brought you here this morning for an encounter with your appointed place. And that means that the enemy shall never have the upper hand over you again in the name of Jesus. But God's charge to you this morning is simple. It is those who are planted in the house of God that will flourish in the court of our God. Therefore, get planted, get rooted. And that simply means settle down. Engage everyone that comes from this altar in teachings, in instructions, and in prophetic directions. And as you put the word of God to work, the word will begin working wonders in your life. And just like God did for Obedidom, who engaged with God, and within three months, God changed his story. For you also, within the space of three months from this day, God would have dramatically changed your story in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody believe it, say it louder, Amen. One more time, I'd like to ask for all our first-time worshippers to rise on our feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Please rise on your feet for a word of prayer and blessing. Bow your head as we pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you right now. We thank you for these precious ones that your mighty hand has drawn. You brought them here for a blessing. Therefore, we decree each one of them blessed. Lord, whatever they left behind as a concern, we decree converted for a testimony. And in the name of Jesus, anyone yet to be saved with the decree today as the day of their salvation. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name we are praying. Please, you may be seated. Ensure your form is completed and submitted to the official closest to you. Once again, you are welcome and God richly bless you. Give Jesus a big hand, everybody. My case is different. In this service today, it's offering time. Offering time, say confidently. Amen. If you haven't done so yet, please properly package your worship seat for this service and label it appropriately. If you have your tithes here today as well, and this is 10% of God's increases upon your life, please put it together. And another kind of financial commitment between you and your Heavenly Father package it properly, label it, and let us get set to be on our feet to worship God with our offerings. As you do so, please remember God's word to us very, very clearly. It says, give and it shall be given unto you. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down. Not only that, shaking together. And going further, it says, running over. Luke chapter 6 and verse 38. Shall men give unto your bosom. That shall become someone's testimony after this service in Jesus' name. Please rise up on your feet, therefore take your financial seed in your hands, your tithes, your offerings. Lift it up to the Lord. Present it to God yourself as we give him thanks from the depth of your soul. Lift up your seed to the Lord. Lift up your voice to him and thank him for putting seed into your hands and magnify his name. Thank him in advance because as you sow in obedience, your harvest is guaranteed. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
keep it lifted. Father, in obedience to your word, we have come today with seed in our hands. We give it joyfully and cheerfully because we love you. Thank you for accepting it in Jesus' name. Therefore, today for every title, the devourer is rebuked for your sake. The windows of heaven open in your direction. And for every giver today, every seed shall be multiplied back to you. A miracle fold. Such that in times of difficulty, while others are experiencing a casting down, for you, you shall be lifted up. Welcome to your season of financial abundance. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Make that amen a louder one. You may please be seated comfortably, cast your seat with joy as we welcome the Faith Tabernacle Choir for their administration.
lift up our two hands to heaven this morning and celebrate Jesus one more time. There is none like him. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. For blessed is the man that God chooses and cause to approach unto him. We do give him thanks. Blessed be your name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you glad we are in church today? Are you glad you are in the sanctuary today? Amen. Every time we come into his house, we are satisfied with the goodness of his house. You are returning satisfied. You are returning satisfied today. You are returning satisfied today. In the name of Jesus. Lift up those two hands and ask the Lord to speak to you today now. Speak to me, Jesus, today. I'm here for your word. I'm here for your war. I'm here for your war. I am here for your war. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Whatever you think is in, enough is enough in your life. I'd like you to mention it to God in person. The reason is you are not entitled to take delivery of what you don't demand. Demand specifically on any issue for which you desire enough is enough verdict to be executed today. Go ahead and pray. Any issue that you desire to come to an end in your life today, call it by name. Take it by force. Call it by name. Take it by force. Call it by name and take it by force. Enough is enough concerning that marital siege. It's enough is enough of that cause on your life. Enough of stagnation. Enough of frustration. Enough of failure. Enough is enough of that sickness. That disease, that plague. In Jesus, precious name, we are praying. Because according to scriptures, you are not permitted to suffer beyond a moment. You are not permitted to be afflicted beyond a while. Your weeping is not permitted to be beyond a night. Therefore, whatever has stayed beyond a while, beyond a moment, and beyond a night, I decree the verdict of enough is enough upon your life. In Jesus' precious name. Give the Lord a big hand of faith. And please be seated. There is this young man who has never lasted beyond two to three months on any job. 
he gets fire. He settled down, squatting with people. Things grew worse. He went everywhere. And you know when um, a Yoruba man said he went everywhere, he went everywhere. <laughs> he went everywhere for solution. But things got worse instead. And he had an encounter with this church, with God's servant. When he heard me say, I could command my liberty. And the word hit me. I did. Today, God has given me breakthroughs in my career. Every plague against your life must come to an end today. I'm living in a choice house. Got a job since 2013. Got a job since 2013. Got married, blessed, became a consultant in oil and gas industry. My name came out in news media, headline, and now I have become a reference point to my friends, to go beyond the glory. You are next in line for a dramatic change of tone. This man's family has been tormented with untimely death. He came to this church 2006. Four of the siblings have died of the same plague, vomiting blood and dying. But from 2006, now listen, he heard me talk about soul winning, so I keyed into it. So soul winning is not a new thing in this church, it's been there forever, it's been there forever. 2006, keyed into it. And from 2006 to 2016, not one person has died in that family. Now, he came at the verge of death. He was already vomiting blood like others. So his time to die was already there. He ran into Jesus and by obedience to a prophetic instruction, the lineage was delivered from untimely death. Nothing endears you and I to God than our obedience. Your presence does him nothing. Neither does he move him. The only thing that moves God in your favor and my favor is our obedience. Because by your obedience, it takes over your battles. He told them to sing, and as they began to sing, he set a bushment against their enemies. Your obedience moves God to take over your battles. Your obedience bring you, brings you under a swarm blessing. Swarm blessing. Irreversible blessing. The word swarm is irreversible. Irreversible blessing. That is, nothing can stand your way again. Yes. Amen. 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 Because you have done this thing, yes. you have not withheld your soul, you only listen from me. Therefore, in blessings, I will bless you. Because you have obeyed my voice, the cause of untimely death came to an end in that play, in that family by obedience of faith. Listen to this. Coming to church clapping, great. But the only thing that moves God in your favor is your obedience. When your obedience is fulfilled, all oppositions are silenced. All oppositions are silenced. Everything resisting your glorious destiny in Christ from being fully manifested shall be duly disarmed this morning. Yeah. 
every testimony you hear is a product of the believer's obedience. You won't do what he says. Neck, neck, can you move him to deliver what you desire? Whatever he tells you to do, do it. It's the key to a world of testimonies. Don't wait for testimonies. Walk them out by your obedience. Walk your testimonies out by your obedience. Now, for instance, building up yourself upon your most holy faith Praying in the Holy Ghost. So, you have to build your faith yourself. Just like anyone must have to build his muscles himself. No one can build your muscle on your behalf. You must get committed to the demands of building your muscles yourself. And faith comes by hearing and understanding the word of God. Faith comes by subscribing to the ministry gifts that have a commission of faith so as to come into the unity of faith unto a perfect man, unto the fullness of the stature of Christ. You never find any faith giant who has not gone through the tutelage of faith from the giants of faith before him. Every professor is appraised by professors before him before he can emerge another one. There is no professor that imagines a professor on his own. He has to acquire the understanding of others and be appraised by others to imagine one. Wake up. No one can build your faith for you. Don't mistake your being in a faith-based church as having faith. Everybody must commit to building his faith or lose ground to the enemy. This is very important. All the challenges of life. are fundamentally faith questions. When your faith is alive and well, you are in command of all things. All things. Every issue of life answers to faith. So faith is one asset. You need to jealously guard and build and keep alive so you can be on top of the issues of life. This is so important. Your faith is like the battery of your torchlight. As the battery goes weaker and weaker, your light goes dimmer and dimmer, 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 dead. So it's not enough to have a battery. The battery must be kept charged. Otherwise, its effect will go dead. Your faith and my faith has unlimited capacity for growth. For he said, thy faith groweth exceedingly. So we are, mm, till we come to the union of faith, to the fullness and the stature of Christ. Unlimited capacity for growth. Don't mistake being in a faith church like this for having faith. Uncharged faith is like having no faith. Dead battery 
It's like having no touch light because it can't generate light. Let's wake up and take responsibility. We have been discussing understanding the unlimited power of faith. If faith is that unlimited, why am I this grounded? What's wrong with me? You have not given your faith the required attention. It's the reason behind the frustration that we suffer. It's time to give faith the required attention. Going to class does not guarantee success in exams. The personal commitment of the students to the course of study is what does. Let's wake up and take responsibility. Faith is not fake. Faith is real. Faith tabernacle is not fake. It's a reality we are in it. Canaan land is not fake. It's a reality. Faith built it. Covenant University is not fake. It's real. Faith built it. Missions around the world that your church runs is not fake. It's real. Faith built it. Bible faith is not fake. You are the question mark. No, no, no. If you are not blessed in a place like this, you are the question mark. Everybody is testifying of God's goodness. I love you with all my heart. Your success is my success. Your breakthrough is my breakthrough. But I can't obey God for you. I can't obey God for you. I cannot obey God for you. And I cannot serve God for you. I can't serve God for you. But if you will obey and serve him, you shall spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. I've been in that 41 years past. In no Susan, I there. I've not had to depend on any mortal being till this point in my life. The day I will, I return back to Jesus. He has all the credit for every grace I've seen in my life today, and He has the same for you. Amen. Amen. I don't know what else to say, I've not said. To me, I just think anytime it's time, just signal to me and I close his service. You oh, have too much. I read virtually all the books that Egan wrote in building my faith. I've been around with Egan since 76. When I say I've been around, don't think Egan is dead. I'm still around with him. You have not read one book. You have read all junk magazines in the world you can find. All junk magazines. Even when they call it junk publication, you see read. But one little book you have never read. I just like our church, our church. All the pastors solid. They speak heavy grammar. <laughs> you are just being entertained. You are not being accomplished. You need to change your position. There is nothing wrong with God. There is nothing wrong with this world. It is your wrong positioning as responsible. Many are not in tune at all. They are not spiritual about anything. They have their mind. And their mind has been upsetting their life all along. This thing works. Generations before us tested it. Triumph by it. We must triumph. Amen. You must triumph. Amen. up in the morning and develop and discover that your muscles have developed. You consciously develop your muscles. You can't wake up and do your hand like this and then it's bouncing like football. No. You consciously develop your muscles. Look. I'm a pastor. It's irrelevant. I'm a founder. 
is not a factor. If you are not committed to building your faith, you end up a failure. You must not fail. Amen. You must not fail. Amen. There is nothing wrong in listening to news. But if you have a better thing to do, to commit to do. This short man has his name around the world. I don't listen to any word news. I have this news Amen. in this book that is more current than tomorrow's newspaper. Hallelujah. It's more current than tomorrow's newspaper. Don't waste your life. You don't have a spear. Build your faith. Paul said, I can do all things. But he said, the book that I left with you when I was in trust, bring for me and my note. Paul said, death, I determined when to go, not you. And he did. Please, please, please mind yourself. Mind your God. Mind is war. Walk in delight some obedience. Somewhere there. In a soapy, creative scenario, this is this church is ordained a church of giants. Amen. And I tell you, as a prophet, yes, in my lifetime, I'll see this army of giants Amen. spanning all areas of human endeavor, Amen. doing what no human has ever accomplished. Amen. Making what grace has done in our own little life look like nothing. Amen. That generation is here. Amen. Amen. That generation is here. Amen. If you believe you are one of them, let me hear you say, shout the loudest. Amen. That's what it is. Over to you, build your faith. It is your greatest asset next to salvation. It's all put you in command of life situations and circumstances. Build your faith. Build your faith. Give it the best of the attention you need. Keep your battery of faith on high charge. Not 5% charge. Not 10% charge. Give it 100% full-blown charge. You put it on a shh. And darkness bows to the intensity of your light. Keep it charged. Keep it charged. We were in a crusade, uh, and then we got off from that crusade to where we were staying, and a huge human size structure, dark, rolled out of the door, and a big board like a vulture. I said, folks, we are sleeping now. There is no night prayer. Satan can't signal night prayer for me. No. Sleep. If you wake up in the morning and somebody else looks like his tea, touch him. Don't pray. Just touch him. Glory to God. We slept on the devil's nose. You are too small. If you are strong enough, wait for us. You are stepping into the room and you are rolling out. Who is superior to who? Keep your faith alive. The challenges of life have no timetable. They have no timetable. Don't get ready. Live ready. Live ready. Live ready. Accident does not have an, a timetable. You don't know when the next accident will happen. Live ready so you can be in charge. Come on now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Understanding the unlimited power of faith. The unlimited power of faith. Your muscles won't build your itself, so your faith can't build itself. It's like building yourself upon your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Study to develop your faith, so you will not be ashamed. You will enjoy divine proofs in your life. Two things to do. Feed on the world to build your faith. And pray in the Holy Ghost to break forth into new realms of revelation. It's all about taking responsibility. Jesus is Lord. I want bought $9,600 of books. 
And when I came back home from the US, my wife said, hey, what did you bring? I said, come and see. So I took her to, be, to the study. I've always maintained a study room all my life. Open the first bag, books. Second bag, books. He said, what else? I said, that's all else. I said, the content of these books can make me a manufacturer of the things I would have bought. Is it not true today? Build your faith. Your muscles will develop itself. Build your faith. When I buy books, I salivate. That's why we are where we are. That's what brought us here. Grace multiplies by knowledge. That's how we were here. Something is breaking forth in your life. Yeah. Obey God. To build your faith is a commandment. Obey God. It's a commandment. Obey it. Build your faith. You are shaking too much. You are shaking too much. So, and God is my witness. I've never called any member of this church on any need till forever. Build your faith. I've not had any private chat with any member of the church since inception. Build your faith. It's my joy and privilege to be a blessing to the challenged individuals among us. Build your faith. Many pastors are taken care of by their members. I'm privileged to take care of the members of this church. Build your faith. I saw Jesus never needed help from Peter. Build your faith. He never needed help from James and John. Build your faith. Everything you are now we ever desire, we answer to our faith. Yes, and your faith level is what determines your command level. Your faith level is what demands your command level. It's what determines your command level. Build your faith. Build your faith. Build your faith. A student that sits only on what is taught in class will never be a first class student. Yes, sir. Build your faith. Go to the library of faith and feed yourself on the word of faith. Amen. The Lord told Kenneth Copeland, he said, get back to all that again taught since 1962 because I'm changing your, I'm bringing you a new face of ministry. Mm -hmm. Go back at the age of near 80 when he told him, go back to all that again taught from 1962 mm -hmm. because I'm bringing you to a new face of your ministry. Mm -hmm. And when the children will call him, sons and daughters will call him, hello dad, how you doing? I'm fine. Your mom is fine. We are doing okay. We listen to the word. You know, we pray. We listen to it again. And then we pray. We rest. We listen to it again. At that age, there are too many lazy drones in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. One do nothing and expect God to do something. And I once told you, any faith that seeks to make God responsible for the outcome of your life is an irresponsible faith. Go and take responsibility. Anything that makes God absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life is an irresponsible faith. A man was on the sick bed in 1986 and he read the book, Keys to Divine Health. He was a, 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 I mean, a, you know, a patient of hypertension and high blood pressure. On page 20, he discovered that Satan is not a gentleman. His faith, the charge of his faith battery rose. He said, no, I'm going. The doctor was a doctor in that hospital. He said, no, I'm going today. From 1986 to 1996, he never took a pee. He walked out of it. When your faith comes alive, your command comes alive. When your faith comes alive, your command comes alive. Stop waiting for God to move. Develop your faith to move God. Develop your faith to move God. I shouted when my faith level rose, 1979, yeah, I can never be sick. And I wasn't ashamed to say it openly until they said David is arrogant. Yes, arrogant against the devil and his works. Based on the revelation of the truth. I'm free. One billion Demons of infirmity can't make me sick. 
It's impossible for darkness to torment light. That torture is over in your life today. There are some people here that the sickness you came with to this church is the last you will ever see in your life. And it's getting off you now. This is so important. Please take this raw. Swallow it all. You are absolutely responsible for the outcome of your life. Nobody to blame, not even the devil. No, the absence of light is what empowers the horror of darkness. When light is on, darkness must go. So it is your the absence of light in your life that the devil takes advantage of to torment you. Amen. This light shines in darkness. Darkness can't resist it. The end has come to failures and frustrations in your life. This is so important. It's not about age, it's about light. Hallelujah. It's, so, it's not about status, it's about light. It's not about position, it's about illumination. So you can get a job today. Yes, yes. When the light that puts you on top of it comes. Yes, sir. One of my daughters here, after a service on Sunday morning like this, I said, you can make anything happen when you are ready for it. After the service, she sat back and read a little book, The Turnaround Power of the World, Testimonies. Got up from the place, knew that her job situation was settled. Tuesday that week, she got a job. Tuesday the same week. Stop waiting for God. All things are already settled. Wake up and take your portion with your faith. That's all you need. What is faith? We've been trying to look at various definitions, but this morning let's look at two or three of them. Faith is an asset of inestimable value. With capacity to deliver all you can ever desire. Come on now. Say with me, faith is an asset of inestimable value. With capacity to deliver all I can ever desire. The word says, if thou canst believe. How many things? All things are possible to him that believeth. All things. All things. Mark chapter 9 verse 23. All things. Faith is an asset of inestimable value with capacity to deliver all that you and I can ever desire. That makes it important to give it all the required attention. Developing your faith, keeping your faith charged, should be given all required attention. It is worth anything that you and I can ever desire. Worth anything. Worth anything. Now, let me say this. And to the glory of God. Everything about this ministry today is faith generated. So faith cannot be fake. The chair you are sitting on is faith generated. Faith is not fake. The building on which you are sitting is faith generated. There was no budget in building this place and there was no begging in building it. Faith is fake, then Canaan land is fake. But is Canaan land fake? 
Are the streets in Canaan land free? I've said it before. Canaan land has never suffered a power outage since 1999. 1999. Water has never run dry in the pipes of Canaan land since 1999. Akeku Sage Karoza. Light will never go out in your life. You will never lack refreshing in your life. We have never raised an offering in this church forever on utilities. Now, Jesus built a gas plant for us. We only had the announcement that gas plant has been built. Capacity is now expanding to 6.5 megawatts. Adding to what you had before about 10, 11 megawatts. Man, without any stress or strain, your struggles must end today. <laughs> Nothing ever moves the hand of God like faith. Who had believed our report, let him Expect the hand of God on his life. Amen. Isaiah 53 verse 1. Now, from today, because what you see here in this commission is the raw hand of God. Yes, sir. What do you see here? Facilitated by the faith of your leader. Huh? The raw hand of God facilitated by the faith of man. If you can't have the hand of God without the devil knowing you do. People think you are working. No, the hand of God is the one at work. By your faith, your developed faith, your strong faith, built consciously into your heart. Something is breaking for us. I'm not entertaining you. I'm pouring my heart to you. Because your success is my success. Your breakthrough is my breakthrough. You have so good enough. Let me show you the path he showed me. Faith was the greatest discovery of Abraham. Romans 4, 1 to 4. Faith is the greatest discovery of any believer. Any believer. The stronger your faith, the higher your level of command. Hey, the devil said to me, you have gone setting other people free. Come and show me how you have children. I said, Satan, you'll be surprised. I won't pray about it. You'll be surprised what? I won't pray about it. I've left that stage. I've left, stupid devil, I've left that stage. Stupid devil have left that stage. Faith takes you from level to level. You have been at the same level for too long. You need to change level. Please walk at a change of level. Walk at a change of level. You find people here who have been here for a long time and nothing has changed. Kill all day. What's the matter? What's the matter? Because God does not change people's levels, he changes individuals' levels. The just shall live by his faith. By his faith. By his faith. It's your turn to live. Amen. You have so good enough, it is your turn to live. Obedience to his instructions is the most valid proof of faith. Obedience is the most valid proof of faith. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Faith is putting his word to work to prove that you believe him. Thereby committing him to make good his promise. If God said move to Canaan, we refuse to move. That's what they can do. 
There is nothing he would do with us than leave us frustrated where we were. Faith is putting God's word to work. Men and brethren, operation run among the series of operations we've been running is one opportunity for you to experience true change of level. And I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm saying. I had to get some staff hired to keep tap with my convert. Paid by myself. We called 2,800 plus last week and 1,500 plus are established in church already. Don't Bible school, I mean, walk me, and Believer's Foundation class and in service group. One of our converts brought three to church one Sunday and brought eight the following Sunday. Celebrating Jesus. Now listen to me. Why? Because I know I'm not near yet what God has in store for me. I know he won't take me to another level. He won't take me there without my obedience. So I committed myself to it. Yesterday my team and I had 568 souls saved. Amen. Literally on the street and reaping the harvest for Jesus. In the marketplace and reaping the harvest for Jesus. Somebody say, ah, this is an opportunity. Oh, this is not the man you see easily. Oh, this is an opportunity. Oh. I was hearing them scream. Mm. What is in the man? Nothing except Jesus. Nothing. I was in the midst of the market, reaping the harvest for Jesus. So what are you looking for? Next level. Amen. That God has promised. I'm not near where Christ is. Mm. And he said, faith has capacity to put me there. Oh, yes. I'm obedient. the only valid proof of my faith. Mm. Don't sit down and waste away. Do something. You can't go out. Can't you pray? They, are you praying? You are not praying. You are not going. You don't believe in it. God, if you change my position, change my position. If you don't change, don't change it. I'm dying. God, that is your reaction. Won't move God one bit. God, you are a fool. I am that I am. God, you are stupid. I am that I am. Whatever you say about me doesn't change me. Nothing changes God. God, I will not come again. Don't come again. You bring somebody else to replace you. <laughs> but in the name of Jesus, your search for rest is over finally now. <laughs> Every siege on your life on your health, on your business, on your career, on your destiny. Every marital siege, every siege of barrenness, every siege of miscarriage, every siege of frustration, every siege of stagnation on anyone's life is declared over right now. What is unique about Bible faith? It unleashes its power through the tongue. Faith is of the heart, but its enormous power is unleashed through your tongue. If you will say to this mountain, be thou the man, be cast to the sea, and shall not doubt in your heart, but shall believe that this thing you say will come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say. Faith delivers its results through the tongue. I give you a mouth and wisdom that none of your adversaries can resist nor gain say. Luke 21, verse 15. Open your mouth wide and I'll feel it. But Israel will none of mine. So I gave them to their heart's desire. And they walked in their own counsels. Verse 13. Oh, that my people had hearkened to me to open wide their mouth. And Israel has walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. 
Faith is what moves God to take over your battle. If you can't say it boldly, God cannot confirm it openly. Whatever you are ashamed to say, you are ashamed to see. You can't say it, you won't see it. You shall have only what you can say. What you cannot say, without that in your heart, you cannot have. Yeah, I can never be poor. And poor say, I'm sorry, I'm going somewhere else. Yeah, I can never be sick. Sickness say, hey, I flee to somewhere else. You can't say it, you won't see it. The enormous power of faith is unleashed through the tongue. No, it cannot happen. Can I have my food, please? And miscarriage vanished. Ekoti sanga karuta preke to zane. You can't say it unashamedly. You won't see it openly. Say it and see it. Don't say it, you never see it. If you will say it with your mouth and not doubt in your heart, you will have whatsoever you say. What you believe is one thing. What you say is what makes it happen. Until you say it, you won't see it. I can never be poor, poverty fled. My obedience remain. And poverty can come back. As long as obedience remains intact, whatever you say remains in force. Whatever you say remains in force. Whatever you say remains in force. Welcome to a new world. Welcome to a new world. Now listen, as I prayed before, why enough is enough? Because every child of God is not permitted to suffer affliction beyond a moment. Second Corinthians 4, 17. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment. For how long? A moment. A moment. Work it for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. She in Gapalata, anything that has gone beyond a moment in your life, I curse it from the root today. First Peter 5 10, the word says, But the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory, after ye have suffered, what? How long, sir? How long? After you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, send them, and settle you. Whatever unsettlement has gone beyond a while in life, long range indebtedness. Stagnation over years. Inability to get married over years. Whatever you have suffered beyond a why, I cause it from the roots today. My scano sage, kerodi sale pragelota. That long reign means courage is over today. That long wait for miracle children is over today. That long term sickness and disease is over this morning. In Psalm 30 and verse 5. He said, for his anger endurable for what? His anger endures for what? In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night. For how much? How many nights? How many nights? Whatever you have wept about for a night. You weep no more on it forever. Yeah. 
your tears is done to testimony today. The storms in your family is over today. The storms in your head is over today. The storms in your career is over today. Remember by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by prophet was C. Pisa. God sent me as a prophet to this generation. And you are on this ground ordained to be a first partaker of that blessing. Therefore, in the name of the Lord Jesus, you are out of your long-range Egypt today. Yeah. What do I do to enjoy my blood acquired liberty? Your liberty was acquired by the blood of Jesus. What do I do? Serve him. Serve God and the interests of his kingdom and no devil can hold you hostage forever. The battle over your life is over today. Yeah. If they will obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. Every pressure over any area of your life is declared over today. For Israel is my servant, even my firstborn. And let my son go that he may serve me. But if you won't let him go, I will kill your son, for I must free my son. Anyone genuinely out to serve God cannot be head hosted by the devil. Therefore, enough is enough of your hosting. If you send one million kidnappers to go after your father, they won't come. It doesn't mean prayer, they won't come. The level of illumination is dangerous. It's dangerous. Even when I don't speak, you are dead. When I don't open my mouth, you're citing me and holding my hand equals death. That's a way you package your life in God. Now, I spoke to one kidnapper. I said, if you don't drop that person in 24 hours, you are dead. That was it. Who are you talking to? I said, send that number to me. Who are you talking to? The place caught fire. What are you talking about? Please build your faith. Don't wait for things to happen. Make them happen. Yes. Work at making them happen. You will serve the Lord your God. Yes. He will bless your bread and your water. Amen. You won't be held down by the devil. Amen. He will take sickness away from you. Yes. No devil can terminate your life. Amen. Amen. Because enough is enough. Under this prophetic canopy, you are not permitted to be assaulted. Enough is enough. Because them my life. Go ye, go ye from among us, it's good to be at the beginning of the day. And go serve the Lord as he has said. Whatever is challenging your serving God comes under a cause today. Making a mockery of your serving God comes under a cross today. Go ye and serve the Lord as you have said. How many are out to serve the Lord this morning? Are you out to serve the Lord? I say to everything resisting any aspect of your life, enough is enough. 
welcome to a new world of liberty. In the name of Jesus. Entering into a covenant to serve God is what puts an end to all the crises and uncertainties of life. For he gave them rest. Round about. Welcome to your world of round about rest. to mention those things again, enough is enough. You found discomfort in my body. Enough is enough. You harass me over the life of my children. Enough is enough. Whatever it is, call it by name, take it by force. Call it by name, take it by force. Call it by name, take it by force. Call it by name and take it by force. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Give the Lord a big hand of praise, a big hand of victory, a big hand of victory, a big hand of victory. Hand of victory. I am free at last. I am free forever. My battle is up. I can find it to go. Thank you, Father. Amen. In Jesus' name. Please get seated. You know what has happened this morning? God has taken over your battle. The testimonies will start flowing in right now. Somebody's long-standing joblessness is over today. Long-standing stagnation in business is over today. Long-standing health issues is over today. Long-standing storm in your family is over today. Yeah. One more time, give the Lord a big hand of praise as you please. Yeah. Amen. Very quickly, you are in this second service today, and you are not born again yet. That is number one step to a world of enough is enough. When you are born again, you are listed an overcomer. And the devil has no more power to torment and afflict you. Wherever you are, you want to surrender your life to Christ and have eternal life and escape from the torture and the affliction of the powers of darkness, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. God bless you. Get on your feet. Wherever you are, I'm praying with you right there in the place where you are. Stand to your feet right now. You want to surrender your life to Christ today, please stand. Wherever you are, stand. Stand in the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Many more standing up. Get up right now. It is a personal decision that will change your story personally. God bless you. Remain standing, please. Can I ask you to move to the nearest aisle to where you are standing? Please move. All of you are standing. Move to the nearest aisle to where you are standing. Let the officials be alive and active, please, and beckon to them. Move to the nearest aisle. I'm praying for, with, for you on that side. Now, number two, there are people that need to rededicate their life to Christ today. No half measure person makes it with Christ. A don't mind that person, so still will not his way. Let not that man think he shall receive anything from God. You want to rededicate your life to Christ and be established in the faith. Please stand to your feet and I pray with you at the same time. God bless you. Stand to your feet. 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 You want to dedicate your life to Christ? Stand to your feet. I move to the nearest eye at the same time. I'm praying with you at the same time in the name of Jesus Christ. These books will help build your faith. The latest we have is understanding the power of faith. Get to with the ushers or the bookstores around and then you get your copy. Born to Win is a simple ABC step by step to a world of victory via the mission of faith. You can get that. The unlimited power of faith is a manual. It will help boost your faith, change your level. And then S plus of faith, how to command the impossible by faith. Now, get all of these materials and settle down. 
to build your spiritual muscles so you can confront all the giants that may come against you. Don't wait to get ready. Live ready. Amen. The future is bright. Your future is bright. Your future is brighter than imagine. All of us who are standing, please bow your heads and let's pray. Would you please pray this prayer of faith after me from the depth of your heart. Lord Jesus, I accept you today as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me all my sins. I believe you died for me on the third day you rose again that I might be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored. I'm now a child of God. I am free from the power of sin to serve the living God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Keep your hands up. Be blessed of the Lord in the name of Jesus. I cover every one of you with the precious blood of Jesus. Remain covered till the day of his appearing. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand for these precious people. Amen. Shall we all rise, please? God sent me to you for your rescue. That hold on your destiny is broken today. That cause under which you've been struggling over time is broken today. that every of your enough is enough matter be turned to testimony now. Your marital destiny is released. Your business and career destiny is released. You will never be taken hostage again. Every arrow of the wicked shot in your di direction returns back to sender. Every arrow against your head returns back to sender. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Amen. Next Sunday is our breaking generational causes service. You won't see them again. Shall we together? For all of us who are involved in Operation Run, expect your prizes. In yeah. turnaround testimonies. Yeah. Expect your prizes. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. We are in the fourth week. The fire is burning. You must win the prize. Yeah. This coming Sunday, never come alone come with at least one soul to greet Jesus with without losing the ones who have gotten before. Jesus is Lord. Let's together share the goodness of the Lord in fellowship, surely. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. My case is different. My case is